Okay, welcome to week 11 of cycle one. We continue our study of biology, which is the study of living organisms and their vital processes. Um, today we do a little switch. We've been talking a lot about the kingdom of Animalia, and today we are switching to the kingdom of Plante. Um, I have done this video several times, um, and it's because I never realized how complex the life cycle of a flower or their purposes um, were or are. So this has been a learning curve for me. So I hope I can communicate to you at least the basics of a flower life cycle and their purposes. It did help me have a new respect for, um, again, just God's creation and his purposes in it, just how complex even a flower's life cycle is and how all the details have to come into place um, for flower, a flower species to continue on um, reproducing and producing more of itself. Um, and so again, it just reflects God's glory. It reflects God's creativity and his intelligent touch on everything, including plants and flowering plants. So, um, so it's much bigger and complex than, um, than I ever understood. This is pretty cool. So, um, so the basics are, um, flowering plants come from seeds. Okay. It's not a huge eye opener there. Um, but the goal then is for a plant when it grows to produce more seeds. That is your outcome. That is what we're going for here when um, flowering plants grow. So um, this is a great week to do a lot of review on your memory work. And so we can talk about again the classification of living things. We are in the kingdom of plantae today. Um, we can talk about what are the types, or not the types, what are the parts of a plant? We know the parts of a plant are leaves, stem, and then roots, um, some parts of a plant. Um, and then today in week 11, well, we also learned what are um, some types of seed plants. Again, plants that come from seeds, you've got monocot, dicot, and conifer. Um, this is a time when you can take the memory work and then you can do a little bit more teaching on those things. Um, show some more pictures of seed plants and flowers. Um, and then today's memory work in week 11, uh, what are some parts of a flower? Some parts of a flower are petal, stamen, and their pistil sepal. Um, and so those are the parts we're gonna be identifying on the plant. The background information has been the tricky part for me, um, and that's what you want to give them just some highlights is the way I tend to think. And so just some bullet points on what we're looking at and what the process is happening. And so in a plant, the flower is the structure that has all of the material to create and make new seeds and reproduce that plant. And so if you're growing avocados, or you're growing kiwi um, or whatever, strawberries. Um, maybe those aren't the best example. Um, if you're growing those kind of things, um, fruits or other things that have seeds inside, um, they, to reproduce, they, the part of the plant that does that work is the flower. And so the flower is not there to just look pretty. It has purposes too. Um, and I'll tell you in a minute some reasons why. So God created flowers, not just for our enjoyment, because they're beautiful, um, but he created flowers colorful for a purpose and he created their structure for a purpose. And so the flower is a working mechanism. It is a, and as I, I guess I always thought of flowers as like the end result, like ta-da, there's your flower. Um, but your flower is the working part to produce um, more seeds, to reproduce the plant. And so in that flower, the parts that we're talking about today are the two different parts, the male parts and the female parts of the flower that work together to reproduce new seeds. And so um, that's the first cool thing, is that the flower itself is not the end result. It is the working structure 
to reproduce for the plant itself. And so that's pretty cool. Um, so all the parts again will identify, explain what's happening in the flower. But again, think of it as a working structure. It's not just, again, there to look pretty and be the end result. The end result are more seeds to get more plants um, so that a flowering plant can continue to reproduce. Okay, so, um, so what happens, I'm gonna show you this beautiful picture that all of you will have. Um, because it is the perfect um, little diagram here. Um, so again, we've got our petals are pretty obvious. Um, petals can be colorful, um, not only for our enjoyment, um, but also because they attract insects like bees and butterflies, which help the whole pollination process. So um, bees and butterflies can see certain colors more than others, so God made um, a variety of species of flowers to be different colors to help um, attract these insects and uh, help, again, the end goal is to make new seeds and reproduce. So, um, so you've got your petals and then you've got girl parts and your boy parts. And so your stamen is kind of equivalent to your boy part and that it has, um, the stamen has the anther on top, which produces pollen. So pollen doesn't just magically appear. The anther produces pollen and it sits on top of a filament, which lifts it up high. Um, Cause again, we want those insects and stuff to get that pollen on their legs so they can then carry it to another plant and pollinate it. And so we've got our leaves to attract the insects. Um, we've got our stamen, which has the anther on top, pollen producing. And then you have the pistil which is this big thing in the middle. Um, so the stamen, some, a lot of flowers have equal number of stamen that they do petals. So there can be a lot of stamen and anthers, um, which are pollen producing, um, but the pistil, there's usually one or a couple. There's usually not as many pistils. Um, some plants actually produce their pistils a different time than they produce their stamen so that the plant is in the right place um, at the right season to be um, pollinated so it can have the best chances of growing. Um, now I was thinking through all those details um, and gave a plant itself that we don't think of having a mind, gave it the genetic makeup and material to know um, or to do its thing to create um, or to reproduce in the best way. Okay, so you've got your stamen, which has the anther and the pollination, you've got your pistil. So the, it has the stigma on top. So once pollen hits the stigma, which has a sticky coating and um, wants to absorb some of that pollen, it produces pollen making tubes, pollen transporting tubes um, down the style. So you've got your stigma, gets the pollen on it from bees and butterflies legs. Um, also, you can have wind pollinated, um, where God created the plant to easily have um, the, the wind blow the pollen over onto the pistil. The pollen goes down little tubes into the ovary or little ovules, which are inside. Those ovules then go through a transformation, just like humans do, from, um, from the Male, the male poets and the female parts joining together and creating new life, um, creating a fruit that has a seed. And so this seed could be one seed or lots of seeds depending on the plant. Um, the seeds help nourish and feed the fruit. Um, and then again, once that happens, your flower kind of goes away and the seeds are then some fall onto the ground, um, some are blown by the wind and they go down and in the perfect environment, like we learned with the baby bean, they break open and create a new plant. So, like I said, it's not kids, not baby stuff here. Um, so again, in our classes, we can be sensitive to the whole male versus female thing. You can say there's, um, you can use that term, I think that's fine. 
Um, but if you want to say there's two different parts that God created to work together to reproduce and create new plants. Um, so again, a quick review there. On this picture, then I'll show you some examples. We've got our petals, which are colorful to attract bees and insects. Also probably um, for our enjoyment too. Um, you get your petals, stamen is the boy part that has the anther, which is pollen producing on top. The pollen is then collected on bees and butterflies legs or the wind um, and, and the perfect timing gets on top of a pistol. The stigma on top of the pistol um, is sticky. Produ it then creates its own pollen moving tubes down to the ovules in the ovary here which then together with the pollen and the genetic material and the ovules makes um, a new plant, makes seeds. Sorry, makes a new seeds, which then when the flower withers, um, the seeds are blown or fall and produce more plants, which is our end result. So again, this flower um, are hard working structure. They are not just for looks. So let's look here at a couple examples. Um, my tutors will have actually a variety. Um, it'd be nice to have just a beautiful lily like that that has everything, but I also like the kids to see that in God's creation, there's variety and variety is beautiful. Diversity is beautiful and purposeful. And so, um, and so these flowers all have those parts. They all have petals, stamen, anthropistal sepals, but they look different. And so to identify them is a little different. So I would give each kid a flower. We're gonna identify the parts the best we can, and then we're gonna swap, change flowers. Identify the parts best you can and swap. Um, so again, so we've got our petals, which this is not a great example. Here's my one. Again, I've done this a few times, so they're looking a little sad now. Here's our petal, our stamen, these lilies, um, these are Peruvian lilies, have a beautiful example of that with your anther on top, on the filament. The pistil here is down here. This is the ovary part down here. So you don't see a, a big old pistil with stigma sticking up. It's down on inside of here and your ovary is right in that little bolt there. So petal, stamen, anther, pistil, sepal. On these, they're actually colored sepals. They're kind of these thicker, darker things. And sepals protect the bud, protect all that material, that working structure inside until it's ready to bloom and get to work. On little, um, here's a rose. A rose, I did not want to tear my rose part, but you can obviously see the petals. You can see the sepals beautifully here. Um, and then inside, you've got those tiny little stamen with the anther on top. And then the pistil again goes down to the ovaries down here in this bold kind of is the reoccurring theme with flowers. Um, these little ones here are harder to see some, but if you can see the little white dots, maybe in between, if I can get a good, there we go, maybe. Um, these are tiny little flowers, but the white dots in the middle are the good pistil. So these are actually easier to see the pistil. Um, with the surrounding little um, stamen and anthers. They're tiny, because these are tiny little flowers, but they have a nice white pistil in the middle, which sticks up. Again, I think it's hard to see on my phone here. Um, and then again, the sepals on the outside. Show you a carnation are very common. You're like, oh, look, there's lots of petals, but that's about it. Um, but voila, if you look in the middle, you can see a beautiful variety here of, maybe you can see it, <laughs> of, um, of, there we go, stamen with the anther on top. And then again, your pistil, uh, which this you can actually see pretty well on a carnation. The pistil is the head of it's right there. The stigma is right there. Um, yep, there you go. And then it goes down into your ovary, which again is kind of the bulge um, at the bottom of the bud. Um, and then I want to show you one other kind. These are little daisies, which are in the family of disc flowers. And so, um, 
And so they obviously, you see your petal, you see your sepal behind it when these little buds. Um, the stamen are pretty easy to see along the edges, the little green fuzzy things there. They are the stamen with the pollen producing anthers. Um, but disc flowers like this, this whole kind of dark middle spot is the part that's uh, equivalent to the pistil. It has the little ovules all within it. So the little ovules are right there. So they're a little easier to, um, to pollinate. Um, but that is the equivalent. So those look different. They have the same kind of parts, the pistil and the stamen, but the ovules are in that disc rather than hidden down in um, some of these other flowers. So again, you'll have this. I hope that um, makes a little bit sense of the process of the working function of a flower. Um, and had just the wonder uh, that God has enabled these to do. All right, enjoy.